Holy Spirit, you are welcomed in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcomed in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcomed in this place. Healing, hallelujah, is welcomed in this place. Deliverance is welcomed in this place. Hallelujah, restoration is welcomed in this place. Peace, hallelujah, the peace of God which passes all understanding that keeps your minds and your hearts. Stay through Christ Jesus is welcomed in this place, in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and hallelujah. I have two words for the day. Hallelujah, hallelujah, two nuggets for the day. I'm just going to go in and just get straight into the word. No, um, no extra, no filter, no fillers, just the word of God. The first word that came to me, as I said, okay, I'm about to go and do this and I'm doing it now. I'm doing it right now. So I stopped what I was doing to literally come and minister the word of the Lord right now, right now. So as I was um, uh, considering what I was going to minister for the day, the Holy Spirit gave me the word abide, abide. Abide. He who dwells in shelter of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. Sometimes we have got to abide. So we have got to abide. We have got to abide. Some seasons we just need to sit still and say, Lord, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So order my steps in your words, dear Lord. Because see, a lot of people are too complex. A lot of people are so complex when it comes down to prayer. Sometimes you might have to just sit back and you could be face facing a challenge or trials and tribulations in your life. So sometimes you might have to just get up and say, Lord, I see Exodus 14 and 14. It says, I will fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. So sometimes you have got to say, Lord, uh, today, I'm leaning and dependent on you to fight in my relationships, fight the fight regarding my health, fight this fight for me, handle my situation, handle my circumstances, handle the heaviness that may be on my heart, handle the heaviness that may be on my mind, because today I just can't. You know, because a lot of times as people, men and women, we are wearing many hats. We are doing multiple things. And so we've got to learn to say, Lord, you said cast your cares upon him who cares for me. So I'm casting my cares on you today. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah and hallelujah, somebody. And hallelujah. So I'm actually going to go into the book of Psalms 91. And as I go into the book of Psalms 91, because today, as we abide, as we abide, the Holy Spirit also touched my heart about the fear of the Lord. See, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But then the Bible says, but fools despise wisdom. Okay. A lot of times we don't fear God because a lot of times we operate. There's a lot of people out here you know, that are operating in their own flesh, in their own agenda, and in their own mindset, you know, so I was just like, okay, Lord, I'm not, in this season, um, I'm really not uh, going to um, inside of the sanctuary right now, I said, because I said, Holy Spirit, I said, Lord, listen here, I've read the Bible, I said, but I go to, I go to church on a Sunday morning, and, you know, it's challenging to listen to individuals that may not have read the Bible. So, therefore, they may be actually passing on this information. So, I said, well, okay, I'm not judging nobody, Lord. I'm just saying. So, the Holy Spirit always puts it in my heart that they have a Bible. It, what they choose to do with their Bible 
is what they choose to do with their Bible. So, you know, I just learned that people get up and they do things according to their own flesh, their own will, and according to the standards and the statutes of others, instead of taking time to read the Bible. Read to read the Bible before I moved out into any position. I had read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and then started to read it the second time before I started to even move in a position inside of the church because you are accountable for everyone that you mislead. So when I listen to ministers and when I listen to pastors, well, oh, you know, um. I'm just going to go ahead and call it the Hananiahs of the world. When I listen to the Hananiah preachers, all of the false ministers, false leaders, false prophets, you know, and the reason why they're false, if you go into the book of Jeremiah, is because they preach to the itching ear congregations to gain the popularity of the people. So you gain the popularity of man, but you are blazing a trail and the trail is not being blazed to get you to heaven. And you are accountable for every soul that you do not point to God. Okay, so that's between each person as an individual and God had to put God had to do an inside job on me first because I'm like, well, Lord, what the heck is going on? You know, I'm like, are they kidding me? You know, because you listen. So it says to him that have an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the church. So it's just like, OK, then it says, try the spirits to see whether they are of God. So I said, OK, well, this is what the Bible says. And this is what they did. This is what the Bible said. And this is what they said. So, OK, so then I can say, OK, well, Lord, I'm just going to pray about this and keep on moving. But in time, all things basically come to its fruition and uh, basically revelation of those things so in the book of uh psalms 91 it says he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty god in this season he's saying abide because i got you covered i've got you covered you are underneath basically like that song says the wind beneath my wings or whatever god has got you shielded and sheltered by uh protection of his spirit of his um angels that he's given charge to protect see he has angels that come out to execute all kinds of things warnings protection vengeance all of that kind of stuff you know so we it's in order to understand god you have got to read the Bible because the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right to a man, but in the end thereof is destruction. So I've got to get outside of my flesh and get inside of the word of God and make sure that I'm prayed up so that the Holy Spirit can constantly minister to me and say, uh-uh, no, 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 no. Because I could be literally thinking one thing and the Holy Spirit will give me clear revelation because a scripture from the Bible will come to my heart. And so sometimes I'll Google it and I'll be like, okay, that's God, that's God, that's God. Because that's why the certain words, because like, as I was preparing to do this, it was like, I kept hearing the words, he who dwells in shelters of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty, shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. And the concept of abiding under the shadow of the almighty kept pining in my spirit. So sometimes we have got to seek refuge in God. And a lot of times we try to do things ourselves, ourselves. So yes, you've got to get up, get out and do things. But sometimes we've got to say, okay, Lord, this is out of my control. When it's pertaining to other people, you've got to say, Lord, please send the Holy Spirit out to tap on their shoulders to let them know that, um, you know, they're going in the wrong direction or they need to be comforted or you know whatever the situation circumstance or the scenario is so it says and i will say um of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress and my and my god in him will i trust surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and the noisome pestilence he shall cover thee with feathers and under his wings shalt thy trust shalt thou trust and trust shall 
be thy shield and buckler. Thy shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction um, that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. I don't care what's going on. I had a girl, I, and I'm going to give you an example. The other day I was in a store and a girl come in and she didn't have on a mask. And so she covers up her face and she says, well, I'm fully vaccinated. I'm fully vaccinated. I'm fully vaccinated. I said, well, you know what? Number one, I have on my mask. Number two, I said, you know, me and the Lord have an agreement because I walk after the spirit, man, not after the flesh. So I'm not about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the pride of life. So I looked at the young lady. I said, the Holy Ghost wouldn't allow you in here without your mask to breathe on me <laughs> until I was done doing what I taking care of my business because that's the agreement that me and God has because I'm not going to walk around in fear but I said certain prayers that anybody with the corona would not cross my path in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus and I'm not as bad as I was when the virus first started because I was walking around borderline almost spread people with lifestyle like uh, uh you know in the name of Jesus six feet in the name of Jesus six feet because the the Lysol kills the human coronavirus, but it's not, not COVID-19 exactly. But I figured that if it kills the one virus, that it'll retard it and make it resistant from attaching itself to my person. So we've got to be prayerful and we've got to know what to pray and we've got to know how to pray the um, things that are of God, about God, and the things as pertaining to, you know, protection from him. You know, I have got to just say, you know, Lord, if anybody has the situation, circumstance, but then I have to be a responsible person and make sure that I have my mask on. I have to make sure that I have on my gloves because just because, you know, you don't have on a mask or gloves and things of that nature does not mean that you can't still uh, contract these germs because it's a vaccination to help prevent possibly but just like i said vaccination is not a cure a vaccination is not a cure so i'm going to just go on but god says that he is there to protect you to lead you and to guide you and to and to um keep you from pestilence disease disaster from sickness from illness and from death so we've got to know that we, we've got to, the, like the scripture says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct our paths. We've got to know that God says that he will protect us, lead us, guide us and keep us and he will keep us from these things. Okay. God says he will keep us from these things. So I'm going to read just a little bit more and then. I'm going to jump over to Proverbs chapter nine for one second, and then I am going to close out for the day, but we have got to abide, abide. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is saying abiding and trusting in God brings blessings, abiding in, in the things of God, in the mindset of God and in obedience to God is a breakthrough. Hallelujah. On the other side of abiding in him, because your blessings are contingent or your blessings are going to be attached to obedience. Hallelujah. Somebody, your uh, blessings are attached to obedience to God. Now I'm here to tell you, I am a firm believer and I'm a firm person that stands up and now I throw the word out there. So when I have moments of stress, I say, you know what, Lord, though he slay me yet when I trust him, I'd be like, Lord, get get them, get him, get her, get it, get whatever it is, because it's not going to ruffle my feathers today, Lord. It is not going to ruffle my feathers today, Lord. So um, it says, um, because thou has, um, because thou has made the Lord, which is my res refuge, even the most high, thy inhabitation, um, there shall no evil befall thee, 
neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. And I'm going to end there. May God have the blessing to the reading of his word for the good and for the edification of God. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm, 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 I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to have to get to Proverbs another day because that just got good. That just got real good. You know, because I didn't prepare Psalms 91, like sit down, read it. I said, Lord, I'm giving the people just what it is in my spirit, in the moment, in the now. And it took me to Psalms 91. So what I'm going to do for the next two or three minutes, I'm going to read the next five or six verses from this because God is so good and his mercy is everlasting and that was confirmation of what I said because I didn't prepare this I did not sit down and study this scripture text to know that God is like mm -mm, nope I got my girl because I'm gonna protect her from this plague regardless of what's going on the situation circumstances scenarios I got this so it says and um we're gonna go back to verse uh to verse 10. I'm going to start at verse 10. It says, There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thee. Okay? For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. God will keep you lined up in his word. Okay? Okay? And I'm here to tell you, because somebody, I had an apostle to ask me, well, how do I discern if a person is lining up with the word of God? How do I know this? And, and well, how do I know if a prophet is false or if a prophet is real? If a prophet is false or if a prophet, leader, minister, preacher, elder, pastor, whomever, if you real, I'm going to share this one thing with you. If you are dealing with somebody and they don't rebuke or talk about sin, if they don't point you to God, the Bible tells you in the New Testament to rebuke, reprove, and exhort. So, yes, I'm going to tell you some good things. I'm going to tell you some stuff that you do want to hear. But I'm also going to tell you some stuff that you don't want to hear because that is what the Bible instructs you to do. Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 17 he went out he said repent because the kingdom of God is at hand repent which means whatever it sin you are in whatever it is that you're dealing with today give it to God repent of it atone for your sins pray about it get on your face say the sinner's prayer and let it go and when you wake up in the morning like Lord do not let Mm -hmm. The things that I'm trying to get rid of reattach themselves, hallelujah, somebody, with the new me. Create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. The prophets, the leaders, the priests, the judges, everybody that God called was to point them to God, was to point them to obedience, was to point them to line up with what it was with thus saith the Lord. So if you are a Hananiah leader and you are out there, you have basically you're going to be bundled to burn. And I'm going to leave that there and I'm going to get on to verse 12. So we in Psalms 91 verse 12. So I'm going to actually go back up and reread verse 11 because it's getting good. It says, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all his ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest Thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon lions and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under thy feet because he has set his love upon me. See, the greatest commandment is love. So God so loved the world. Okay, somebody? God so loved the world. So he loved his creation. He looked back at his creation in the beginning and he looked back and said, and it is good. Okay? So he loved his creation. So I've got to abide. Hallelujah, somebody, in the things of God. Hallelujah. I've got to walk. Hallelujah, somebody, in the things of God. I've got to talk. Hallelujah, somebody, in the things of God. And I've got to think and be lined up 
in the things of God. It says in verse 14, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known thy name. Like Tasha Cobb says in her song, he knows my name. He knows my name, my God, hallelujah, hallelujah, somebody, hallelujah, my God, hallelujah, my God, mm -hmm. my God, Jehovah Jireh, hallelujah, Jehovah Ropa, ha hallelujah, somebody, the I am that I am, hallelujah, somebody, the God that sent his only begotten son, so that whosoever shall believe on him shall be saved, hallelujah, and not just be saved, but have everlasting life, the God which is in heaven, the creator and the maker of men, I don't know sometimes what God people is talking about, people be like, well, God this, God that, God that, God this, I thank God for Jesus this morning, because the Bible says no man can come unto the Father, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, but by me so i thank you jesus hallelujah because see no man can come unto the father but by me it's second timothy 2 and 15 it's called rightly dividing the word of truth so my god hallelujah through jesus hallelujah have mercy on some souls so it says I will set him on high because he has known my name. He knows my name. Hallelujah. Oh, how he walks with me. Hallelujah, somebody. And oh, how he talks with me. That's how that song goes. I just, you know, and God forgive me because I don't have the rights to touch his club songs. But he says, oh, how he walks with me. Oh, how he talks with me. But oh. You know what I'm saying? But the bottom line is that he knows, hallelujah, somebody, my name. I'm going to sing that in the atmosphere because I need to keep my name, hallelujah, at the top of the list, hallelujah. I need to keep my name just on the list, hallelujah. I need to keep my name on the heart and the mind of God, hallelujah, somebody, so that I can have interest, so that he says, well done, a good and faithful servant, come on up a little bit higher. He said, come through my girl, Sharita. Hallelujah, somebody in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. So it says, and he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and I will honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. So once again, at the end, may God have the blessing to the reading of that word for the good and for the edification of your souls. Know that if you abide, hallelujah, somebody, God's got protection. Hallelujah. If you abide, abide in him, hallelujah, he's got protection. He's got healing. He's got deliverance. He's got restoration. He's got your peace. He's got your joy. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. And hallelujah, somebody. God is just and faithful and uh, uh, to do exceedingly above all things but fail. So hallelujah, somebody in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody in the name of Jesus. So the prophetic nugget of the week is to encourage everybody to abide. Hallelujah. To rest in the word, the, to rest in the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in God, to rest in him, to trust in him, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to our own understanding. Hallelujah, somebody. We've got to be prayerful. We've got to be mindful. And I'm ending right here. So we're going to read Psalms 91. That is going to be the nugget for the week. So when somebody is try, having a trial or tribulation through this week, you tell them, my sister, abide because God is going to protect you, okay? God is going to heal you, okay? God is going to deliver you, okay? God is going to restore you. And you tell them that God is going to fix that thing. Hallelujah, somebody in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody tell somebody to abide. Hallelujah. To abide in love. Hallelujah. To abide in obedience. Hallelujah. To abide in repentance like lord just forgive me for every thought for every word for every action for every deed that is against you right now in the name of jesus and he says even i have blotted out your transgressions and i have thrown them into the depths of the sea so abide and trust in the lord tonight hallelujah somebody walk in his name talk in his name and trust 
in him. So I have got to go because I don't really like to be excessively long, but I will be back on probably midweek to tie up some loose ends. I have been battling. The Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and wickedness in high places. So it's been a struggle. I've been in, I'm in a press mode. So I press towards the mark. Okay. So I'm in a song. What is that? Isaiah 40 and 31. They that waiteth on the Lord. Okay. So I'm, I'm waiting for a tsunami of uh, energy to push me over this little stupor that I'm in. So I'm here to tell you today, no weapon formed against me will prosper. No tongue that rises against me that thou shalt not condemn because that is the inheritance of the Lord. So I'm giving the word of the Lord back to the word of the Lord and trusting in him and knowing in him and believing in him and walking in his statutes in obedience that he will be just and faithful to do everything that he says in this book okay so i have a message called take a look do the book but you've got to watch uh say yes with sharita so you have to look up and stay posted and stay tuned and find out how to access say yes with sharita i don't know if say yes with sharita is just about to be a youtube thing in the near future but i, I don't know but right now it is on the now network and it is you can see a few selected um episodes of say yes with sharita <clears throat> excuse me i also need for you guys to stay posted i am so excited um this summer i have a new um venue that is going to be transpiring in conjunction with say yes with sharita so stay posted and just stay tuned stay blessed remember repentance obedience Faith, love. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. <clears throat> so we've got love, we've got prayer, praise, and worship. So remember that God loves you. Remember that I love you too. And if you say yes to the Lord, he will say yes to you. So as always, stay tuned, stay focused, stay prayerful, and stay blessed. Abide. <clears throat> abide and abide this week we are abiding in the blessings of god we are walking in the uh the blessings of god we are abiding because god is all that in a bag of chips god is the man hallelujah somebody not the man next to the man and i'm not sexist but it's just a cliche you know so i don't want a whole bunch of women saying how can you say that how can you say you know i'm not into this feminist movement because i'm obedient to the word hallelujah somebody that's why you see me doing online ministry tv ministry and things of that nature in the very near future i will and i do have um as a matter of fact i'm just going to throw that out there um i uh can be reached now at one eight three three seven say yes one eight three three seven say yes um i will be setting up times for prayer i will be uh setting up uh that number is for say yes with sharita and say yes with sharita will um basically i will be having a lot of guests on my show on a monthly basis so stay posted stay tuned um i also share with the folks you know i'm i'm a hometown girl so cleveland first and then i am going to spread abroad so you know if you're from cleveland uh and if you have something that is an awesome testimony call one eight three three seven say yes and um, I will see how to make you a good fit because, you know, I am about inclusion because God doesn't turn anything or anybody away. So God bless, stay blessed, be blessed. And there's a blessing on the other side of your yes. So say yes to the Lord today. <laughs>